Hey, you're watching Vinyl 4 Miles, your best resource for music, audio, gear, and vinyl reviews. Today, we're taking a look at the B1. It's the premier analog synth and sequencer from Donner. Stick around. Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Michael, this is Vinyl for Miles. What we do here is audio gear, music gear, guitars, vinyl, pretty much anything having to do with pro audio or my hobbies, I'm gonna bring you content. If that's something you're interested in, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and bell notification while you're at it. Today, we're taking an in-depth look at the Donner B1 analog synthesizer and sequencer. I'm a huge fan of Synthwave. I've never owned a synthesizer, but what's cool about this is it doesn't have standard keys, it has pads. So if you're more of a rhythmic player like I am, you can kind of keep tempo on here and take a more rhythmic approach to it without worrying about hitting the keys too hard because again, they're pads, they're meant to be hit. So full disclosure, I do have a partnership with Donner. They do send gear to the channel at no cost. They do not pay me, and if the gear does not reach the standards of my channel, I send it back and I don't review it. That out of the way, why don't we hear what this sounds like in a mix? There is no additional synthesizer sounds or effects coming from Pro Tools. Everything comes directly from this little tiny analog synth. So why don't we go ahead and take a listen. So that's the song I put together with the B1. I typically don't write songs in that genre. I'm usually like hard rock, metal type music. I play guitar primarily, but it's really cool and a breath of fresh air to mess with this, get the creativity kind of moving, come up with new song ideas and do something outside my typical genres. What I wanna do next is dive into this. Just do a quick deep dive. I'm gonna go over the ins and outs, quality of this, the build, and go through some sounds and show you how to use the sequencer that's built into this. All right guys, so here we have the B1. Let's go over the ins and outs. I'll try to make this quick. You have your main out. That's gonna be what you send to front of house or your amp or your DAW. Uh, use a TRS cable. If you're going into something like Pro Tools, a balance cable is gonna sound best. We have a MIDI in, MIDI out, USB-C, and your power. Then you also have your switch over here that turns the unit on and off. There's a few ways you can do tempo syncing on this. You can either use MIDI, USB, MIDI over USB, or you have a little mini bay up front. Sync in, sync out. Auxiliary in, like if you're using it with a uh, DJ setup or something like that and you want to take audio in, you can, or if you want to jam to some beats, definitely you can use aux in. We do have a headphone out too. So we have one, two, three switches up here. This changes your wave. So you can do saw wave or you can do square. I have everything at noon right now. You have a pitch control. This is a filter. You could do cutoff, resonance, depth. Uh, you do have an envelope. There is a decay knob here. You could turn it up and down. And finally, you have your accent. Now you can't use the accent unless you turn it on. Down here, there's an accent button. So this does not do anything unless it's turned on down here. Here you have your saturation. So this is basically the distortion, how to make your uh, saw sound sound thicker. Uh, it's right here. You get a drive and a tone. Tone all the way to the left, very bassy. Tone all the way to the right, very treble focused. And we have a nice little delay unit here. When you turn it on, you got level, time, and feedback. The delay does not automatically sync to the tempo you're at, so just keep that in mind. You could turn the level up and down. Oh yeah, finally we do have the master over here, which is this nice big plastic knob. All the knobs are plastic, a little cheap. I'd probably eventually replace these knobs. I don't really like them. I like knobs that have a little bit of grip on the side. Turning it on, your keys light up, nice and fancy. And they do have a hue transition here, so it goes from blue to white. 
which we'll get into later. When you're using the sequencer, you can actually change your key and it'll light up what key you're in, which is pretty cool. Why don't we go over some of the sequencing settings? So uh, you really can't see over here, but you get a little screen. This goes all the way up to 130, I believe. 130 patterns that you can set into the sequencer, or 130 sequences. You can overwrite, edit, do whatever you want with. Down arrow, octave, up arrow. Press the octave once. You have negative one, zero, and one. Here's zero. Here's negative one. And here's plus one. Uh, moving down, you get your tap tempo here. So if you were playing like I just did, I have the arpeggiator on right now. So you can change your tempo manually, or you can tap it, which is pretty nice. If you want something insane, like super fast. Pretty crazy, or you get something super slow. This is your play stop. This will play the sequences or the patterns. So we're on sequence one. If you press up, it'll go to the next sequence automatically as soon as it's over. So when it hits that number 16, So you record edit button. If you press this once, you can edit a sequence. Let's stop that there. Uh, we have our pattern button here. So when you're in the arpeggiation mode, which is ARP here, you notice that pattern disappears. When you click off ARP, now you're back in pattern mode. That means you can use the sequencer. When you're in ar arpeggiation mode, you cannot use the sequencer. So keep that in mind. Let's get out of that mode. This is your save button, clear reset. I'll show you guys how to use that in a little bit. Then these are kind of quick uh, filters. You have your gate length. You can actually change your gate length to make the note longer or shorter, which is pretty cool. Accent, when you turn this on, you can control the accent volume here. When the accent's off, this knob does nothing. We have ratchet, slide, uh, that's if you want to transition notes. Then ARP, that's your arpeggiator mode. If you hold any notes down, it'll start arpeggiating through them. Literally, you can just start arpeggiating stuff on the fly, which is cool. And then finally, we have our hold button. Hold does exactly what you think it does. It'll hold it for you. The hold feature is something I love to use. It's really great. So now that we've kind of gone over the layout, I've gone over how you can set up your settings here. Why don't we not worry about the patterns, not really worry about how to get into the sequencer, and let's just listen to some of the sounds. I'm turning on the arpeggiator. I'm going to turn on hold because it makes it really easy to go through here and kind of mess with the sounds. We're going to go into saw mode. So let's hear what it sounds like. Everything's at noon. This is your pitch. It goes down a full fifth. So that's five notes. It goes down and it goes up five notes. Getting into your filter. Here's the cutoff. I'm just going to start messing with the cutoff resonance and the depth. With depth, the further right you go, the more treble you're going to get. The further left, the more bass. Same thing with cutoff. Let's change the octave and go down and get some bass sounds. I'm going to turn on the saturation now and get a little more dirt on here. Now let's turn on the accent and kind of hear how it sounds. some delay.
Okay, so now we're in square, turn all the effects off. Let's hear what this sounds like. Turning the cutoff and resonance down, the depth up a little bit. This is just it by itself, no saturation. Let's turn on the accent. I just turned the gate length up to eight. It's gonna make the notes last a little longer. Saturation on. Something cool you can do with the arpeggiator though is if you press it once, you can turn it up. So from one to two to three to four to five to six, and that'll change how many notes it's actually gonna hit. Um, sorry, it goes all the way up to eight, not six, my bad. That was all just me doing a pattern versus this. Which is the Stranger Things theme. I just pressed all the notes at once, I used hold, arpeggiator, and I was just going through the different arpeggi uh, arpeggiation cycles that are built into this thing. So it's really cool. You could literally use this and set up your own little show. If you turn on ARP, turn on hold. I like to crank it up to like number seven. If you have a bunch of people you're playing for. You get the idea. You can mess around with this, play it live. It's it's freaking awesome. Why don't we dive into the sequencer? So uh, that's the big thing here. Everyone loves sequencers. You can piece together your own notes. There's all kinds of cool stuff you could do with this. First thing you're gonna do is there's all these pre-made sequences you can go through in patterns. Notes one through 16, so as you're watching it play. It's not showing you what notes are playing. It's showing you the sequence of notes. There's 16 total, and it'll say, hey, you're on the 11th note here. And while you're playing it, you can press and hold the notes to mute them. So watch. Those two I just muted, 11 and 12. So I'm gonna mute 13, 14, and 15. So if you press and hold, you can add rests or mute notes. If you just press it once, you're gonna change the key. And while you're playing it, you can change the tempo. So now I'm gonna show you what these little uh, punch-in buttons do while we're playing the sequence here. If you press gate length and hold it, you can change the gate length. If you want it really staccato, you could just put it all the way down to one. Or crank it up and have it transition between them. You could turn the accent on if you press and hold it. You could turn ratchet on if you press and hold it. So let's play it. You have to change the number though. If you 
do save it though, I just turned Ratchet to four. Let's go ahead and save 26. Now if we play the sequence again. It will save the Ratchet value that you give it. And what Ratchet does, it makes it sound kind of glitchy and repeats the notes four times per measure. So that's why it sounds kind of like a video game. Play the sequence again. Slide. Pretty cool. And ARP and hold do nothing uh, when you're in pattern mode. So remember, ARP and hold only work if you're using that arpeggiator, if you're just using it as a synth. If you're in pattern mode, those two don't really do much. All right, so I kind of showed you the basic keys, what you could do with the patterns. Why don't we go in and create our own pattern now? So let's click record edit, and we're gonna press and hold clear. Everything wiped out completely for me, which is great. And why don't we just do the Stranger Things theme, since that kind of is what this does best. So. It's an eight note sequence. Press play. All right, so here's the sequence going up to eight. If I want to add more to it, click record edit. It stops at eight, right? If I start typing in notes now, it's gonna overwrite everything I have here. So you're gonna to have to move up manually. There's the ninth note, 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th. So why don't we start with another longer sequence here, so. That's a 12 note sequence. So here's the cool thing. Now we have a 12 note sequence, click record, edit. Again, you select each note by going between, up and down. I want to, let's say, add a slide between notes. You can do that. So I'm on three, that's blinking, says I'm on three. I'm gonna press slide. Let's go up to four. I'm gonna press slide. Let's hear what that sounds like. That is pretty much the Donner B1 in a nutshell. Again, my favorite thing to do, arpeggiator, turn on hold, turn on the delay, and just have fun. All right, so that was the in-depth overview of the B1. Uh, what is my feedback? What are my final thoughts? So my final thoughts are for the price, this is $199. This is a clone of the Roland 303, but good luck trying to find a used one for $199. It's not gonna happen. For $199, if you could probably find a coupon and get it a little cheaper, I think it's 100% worth the money. Not only is this a fun piece of gear to write music on, create sequences, kind of mess with the sounds, get those creative juices flowing, but it's a very practical uh, piece of gear that has a lot of ins and outs. So you can use this on your computer as a MIDI controller, you can sync like the delays and like the tempo and all kinds of other stuff through MIDI. It does have USB options if you wanna hook it up to their software, complimentary software that goes with this. I didn't actually use the software. I'm taking this from the approach of, I'm only gonna use it as a physical unit. I don't wanna go onto the computer and create sequences because I could just do that in Pro Tools already. I told you in the beginning, this was sent to the channel for free, but I really think this is worth the money. The only components I would like to change have to do with these knobs. The knobs are very, very cheap. I don't know if you can tell. This is the number one point of failure I can see. And the actual dial itself that you put the knob onto is also made of cheaper plastic. So I know they had to cut some corners to keep this at 199, but my feedback to Donner is maybe upgrade your knobs a little bit, something a little higher quality but the switches feel great, they don't feel loose, the patch bay was fine, your MIDI ins, MIDI outs, it does have five pin MIDI, so if you guys want something with a five pin MIDI on it, this has it. Main out sounds great if you're using a balanced TRS cable. Just overall, I'm really impressed with this. All right guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Until next time, I'm Michael, see ya.